Hey over there, Joe Lunchbox. Enjoy dining out. And today we have landed right here in Baltimore, Maryland. Now, me and Joy, whenever we go to a new city or even a city we've been, we love going to the aquariums. Now, in Baltimore is the actual National Aquarium. You would think it was in DC. And you would sort of be correct. It used to be in the basement of an administration building in DC. Oh, and that was one of the weirdest, smallest aquariums we ever went to. It was here too by then, but it still existed. It sadly has shut down the one in DC. The one in Baltimore is still here. It's big, it's awesome. It's one of our favorite aquariums ever. And we're happy to go and we're happy to bring you. And hopefully you like that kind of thing. If you do, you should like this video, subscribe to our channel, comment down below, all that's appreciated. But we're about to head in. So uh, step up, let's go for this ride. We figured this Visit Baltimore sign was a good spot to start the video. Well, as good as any. And uh, in case you ever haven't been to Baltimore, Everything is built around, a lot of the tourist stuff, around the Inner Harbor. To our left of our sign, we see the actual aquarium. It has got bigger since the last time we were here, but you can see other tourist attractions. To the right of the aquarium, you have some classic ships you could go on, a submarine. You can even take out your own little uh, pirate ship. That might be something for another day. We just wanted to show you the inner harbor a little like this just to set the mood to see where the aquarium is but it's time to go into the aquarium that's what you came here for we came through the main entrance straight into a waterfall with some trout swimming beneath it one thing i love about this aquarium is the displays the enclosures are beautiful You were just yawning. I've never seen a trout yawn before. Oh, I love it. See, we just walked in. Saw the trouts. Aquarium is built upward, not outward, which is cool. On top with tropical rainforest. But since last time we were here, we have this bridge now that takes us to Dolphin Discovery. First thing we get to as we come in is a big photo spot near a Megalodon jaw. You gotta be careful, there's pirates outside. Beautiful view out of the aquarium window. Seeing the inner harbor, a submarine. Ooh, you can even rent some dragon boats. It always makes me sad. Looking across that building right in front of us used to have a Ripley's, believe it or not, but believe it or not, it didn't last. Blue Wonders, reefs to rainforests. What's your connection to water? I drink it every day. Bubbles. I remember being a little kid in elementary school coming here on our drive down to Hilton Head, South Carolina being blown away by this aquarium. The whole almost floor of the main part of the aquarium is a massive tank. You can see the big wreath that has some big rays, fish swimming around. Ooh, a little shark just swam in the frame. Here comes another one. Here comes the shark. A little black tip right there. You see, the song was wrong. A ray isn't a drop of golden sun. It's actually a marine life animal. We're looking at one right now. We're looking at two of them. Human. On the screen, touch an animal. <laughs> of course she picked the homo sapien human diver. I thought it was telling me I'm allowed to reach in and touch the animals. I think you're allowed to touch them on the screen. On the screen. You see, you're allowed to explore more. Like, say you want to know about the oriental sweet tips. Sweet lips? Sweet lips. See, so you can just touch it and learn that a single sweet lip is an easy target. But in schools, these small reef fish form bewildering fields of fast-moving stripes. 
and spots that make it nearly impossible for a predator to pick just one out. Those remind me of that. Follow water's endless journey through our ocean planet by heading up the escalator. I love me some good theming. We have lights here, shining lights up. Looking like we're underwater. Water connects all living things. And because of that, we're actually gonna follow water in the state of Maryland from the mountains to the sea. We're starting a freshwater beginning, starting on an Allegheny stream. I love all the fish thing you realize this is just a turtle hanging out on his rock, his fake log. We got our our wood turtle here in this representation of an Allegheny stream. Follow the water from Allegheny stream to the Chesapeake Marsh. Got all these little minnows and looking at some of the uh, shells sticking out. We were learning how the freshwater mussels help, just like their saltwater cousins, the oysters, help clean the waters. We get to feel the terrapin stick shell. Ooh, terrapin. And we could look at some of his eggs too. We have made our way to Assateague Beach. Not literally here in the aquarium. You see over here we have a sea pod. Some shells along the beach. It's interesting when I see a fish like this called the look down. And to me I think they look more tropical. It's weird to think they're in the waters of Maryland. We're at the Atlantic Shelf. Some people might put books on their shelves, but this shelf is filled with fish. Oh. When we touch this, we hear drumming up a mate. Male drum vibrates their air bladder to attract females. As you can see, we're more or less circling up and up around that center pool. But I love this whale skeleton suspended from the ceiling. It puts things in perspective when beneath we have different kinds of sharks and rays. And then you see just how big a whale is. I like it. We're not on an escalator, we're on a moving walkway now. We're going at an angle like an escalator. Neon wrapping around the outside of this area, looking like blue waves. Protect natural areas. This place talking about how if we see stuff like some footprints and stuff, learning that there's snakes that hunt mice and all the animals that need the dunes as their habitat. It's so weird. The wall looks like it should feel wet, but it's not. It's like a resin coating, feeling the shells of the sand. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. But with the magnifying glass, when you shift it, it changes the writing so you can get more information. Little horseshoe crabs. Okay. They're Atlantic horseshoe crabs. And it's telling us at least once a year, young horseshoe crabs replace their protective shells with new roomier ones. It's the molting. And we can feel what one of those empty shells feels like. Yeah. A big touch tank with stuff like skates, horseshoe crab, whelk, stingrays. I touch gently underwater and showing you where on the horseshoe crab to touch. We can see some of the rays and the horseshoe crabs and the touch tank. We are made our way into the Atlantic. These are some of the fish that can be seen a little offshore. A striped burfish. I want to see your hands like this. So we are just taking two fingers 
and we are letting them slide across the top. So we don't fish. want to poke. We don't want to push, and we never touch them when they're upside down. You got one right there. Wet dummy. We got no touching jellyfish. So a uh, peeled grape. Yeah, I've also heard uh, soft boiled eggs, raw chicken, flower petals. We've got some moon jellies in here. Now once you've had a turn touching the jellies, you're gonna want to wash your hands before rocking out with the stonefish. <laughs> oh, these guys are upside down. You gotta wait for you to flip over so I can touch you. Nope. Good. Yeah, the jellies one. start small, they get big, and oh, no, they shrink back down. down. Big guy down there. He was right there. Right there, right there. Oh. Right there, right there. Oh. Second, folks, as you are coming on up, we are just yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. The next area of the aquarium is surviving through adaptation. We have some sturgeons and gars. And now we're learning how their scales are different, almost guy. like armor. He has such a short nose. He's like an alligator. But not an alligator. Look at that guy. Look at we see traditional scales. And then we see ancient armor. The scales of monsters are changed. They're thick and bony now to protect the fish. We're learning about cichlids. Cichlid family is living in Amer Africa's largest and oldest lake. And they said how there was only a few, and they branched out to be over 250 species through many years of evolution. And they would have been found in Lake Tanganyika. Adaptations help survive. We have an electric eel. Imagine partially blind, and he actually doesn't always use the electric bed, he uses it to sense other animals. Sort of feel them out. You can actually see when that electric eel is active, showing its charge. Other adaptations some of the fish have are like ribbon-like tails to help move, or air bladders that help them stay buoyant. This fish has beautiful colors. I thought it was gray and white, but it's sort of like a gray and a neon green. What's the dragonette? We have a ruby dragonette. Joey's been looking for it. Swimming with sort of like it's sort of like it's sliding along the rock. This bristletail file fish floating looks like upside down but he's just eating cleaning up the bottom of his tank looking for a snack anything over there we have a beautiful nautilus shell a beautiful example of a fibonacci sequence in nature beautiful anemones this tank's talking about unique ways of eating and how the tentacles help guide Stuff like little crabs into their mouths. And with that adaptation of ways to eat, we have a starfish that says it moves slow, but to eat, it flips its stomach inside out to eat. We have another starfish over here hanging out on this rock. Looking at some line seahorses, They're talking about how the disappearing of seagrass is endangering their habitats. Cute little mud skipper. I see you. You see me with your eyes out of the water. We got some red banded coral shrimp. He looks active, moving around. And a golden tailed moray. It's a tiny little yo. See, this isn't a fish. We have actually diving beetles. I don't think it's a little, little pocket of air. And that's why they survive. The beetle traps a little pocket of air. You think you're safe underwater from bugs? Nowhere. They are everywhere. Swim, fella, swim. <laughs> Just finally got a plaque saying that the whale skeleton we've been looking at is a 50 foot long fin whale. This massive marine animal perished 
off New England coast nearly 150 years ago, currently endangered fin whales still travel the world's oceans. Comparing some bones, we have a human vertebrae. You can see the size of it next to my hand. Compared to a whale vertebrae. Big difference. Trying to see who's lurking in the shipwreck. That's what the theme of this tank is, lurking. Somewhere here we have red groupers, but they're lurking. We have fairy basslets, but they're lurking. Are you lurking? It's like, I'm out of here, I can't handle this guy. Cool dragon moray here. And a stonefish. And you can see from the stonefish, but this is how he almost looks like a stone. They're hiding so they can get some food. Yeah. This thing's all about the coral and how the coral might look small, but it's growing still. We have a Picasso triggerfish. Look at the patterns. These fish flaunt their colors to scare away their predators. Threadfin butterfly fish. I love how the pattern goes in two different directions. Picasso triggerfish like, no, film me. Some migrating fish. We have a tank of some striped bass. Do you think that these striped bass are Paul McCartney's favorite fish because he played the bass? One of my favorite blind cave fish. They evolved past the points of eyes and they sense the surroundings with vibrations. Going up again and it is a busy day here at the National Aquarium. Don't be fooled. There might be a ceiling above us. We're not on the top floor. There's actually more. Another harbor view room. I was going back and back. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> and this harbor view room actually has a little snack bar and lots of seating. That, that bar scared me. Got all the puffin puffins. Whoa! Evan, look under! That's wishing this glass was in here to be splashing us. Trying to clean off a little, giving us a little show. See Mary Poppins, they wanted tuppins, tuppins for the birds. They should have wanted tuppins, tuppins for the puffins. Puffins! It's funny. It looks like it's by Atlantic puffins and razor bills. She got right there. We have a kelp forest of the North Pacific. Another floor up, another view down. We have some tanks based off the Amazon rainforest. We have some turtles swimming under the roots. And we got some big fish. Have you ever seen polka dot fish before? Look at these Amazon river fish with these dots on them in oranges and yellows. Oh, turtle, you want to photobomb them? We have a big rip sore catfish. You see the side of his body looks like so. Ooh, there he goes. But I like tanks like this because not everything lives under the water. We have another turtle on top of this rock. We had a perspective. You see the turtle? He looks a little bit in the tank there. And now he looks right here. That's the same turtle. Weird. 
We have a red-tailed catfish here. I'm looking because also in this enclosure, we supposedly have a giant talking catfish, and I've never talked to a catfish before. A white blotched river stingray. It's amazing that stingrays, the species, can go between salt water and in fresh water, depending on the species. But I love that there's also our fresh water stingrays. Here we have a giant South American river turtle, and hanging out above them on this rock, we have a caiman. This fish understands how to get its beauty sleep. It's actually using a leaf as a sleep mask. This tank and the next tank tie into each other. When it's a rainy season, if you see, we're actually looking at bases of trees. This is what this would look like in the rainy season. And the next tank will show what it'll be in the dry season. Oh, and this would be the same green. area near the dry season. We have an emerald tree boa. We have giant waxy tree frogs. That's a poison frog. And my favorite, the poison dart frogs. Yep. Another dart frog. It's like that old, it's like that old cat poster. Hang in there. But look, we have to go through the rotating doorway up another escalator because right here on the roof is the rainforest. As a kid, this was my favorite part of this aquarium. I was like, I've been to aquariums I see fish, but this is a rainforest? Like I was saying, this is my favorite part of this. The fact that the roof is fully enclosed in a rainforest. And you just look at it. And it's funny, it's a rainy cold day here in Baltimore. But this is why I didn't bring a coat. So I could take this in and enjoy it and not be sweating in my coat. Joy already taking off her coat. I mean, you could have carried it. It's always the easier method, but... Cures lie deep within the tropical rainforest. People over the world rely on rainforest plants and animals to treat diseases and relieve suffering from skin and heart conditions to aches, tumors, glaucoma. It is crazy. One-fourth of prescription drugs in the United States contain ingredients found only in the tropical rainforest. Animals live high and low. We learn how, like, smooth sided toad is the forest floor but then we have like scarlet ibises in the canopy there they are the red bellied piranhas of course we couldn't have an amazon rainforest without piranhas bird joy i found your friend the macaws We have a two-toed sloth named Wesley way up in the tree. And low down on the ground, we have this tortoise. He might have been bad. It looks like he's in timeout in the corner. Nope, nope, nope. He's just hanging out. And as we zoom in past these ferns, you can see that little gray fur ball. That's another one of the two-toed sloths here. And while reading about the sloths, they actually only come down to the ground once a week. And it's due to their slow metabolism, so they only climb down once a week to poop. And here's another angle of that sleeping sloth. They sleep 20 hours a day, so the chance you're gonna see them sleeping is a pretty good chance. The macaw up top was all red. This one we have blue with a yellow body and a little green on the head. Holly, want a cracker? No, I want some water to put out this blowtorch. And everyone's looking at the macaw that they're skipping. The spot bellied side neck turtle hanging out by the waterfall. And when you leave the rainforest as a kid, my favorite animal, the poison dart frogs. The Panamanian golden frogs. See them hiding back over here? Behind the 
plant flies. And then we have the poison dart frogs. What's it's interesting is they're not poisonous in this enclosure. You see, the poison dart frogs are only poisonous because of what they eat in the rainforest. And since they're in captivity, they don't eat the poisonous things, so they're not poisonous. There's like four gears, one hanging out up there. See, he can't say it's not easy being green because he's blue. And now we have more poison dart frogs. These ones are called green and black poison dart frogs. You can see where he got his name. But this one here, this one's terrible. His name's actually the terrible poison dart frog. It's the most poisonous of the poison dart frogs. In the wild, its skin secretes enough poison to kill 10 humans. Really small poison dart frogs. They're called the Anthony poison dart frogs. Oh, look at how tiny those are. And up top, we have some more yellow and black, but they're actually yellow banded poison dart frogs. There's a lot of different species of them. I'm trying to find in here, there's another one that's an imposter. It looks like a poison dart frog, but it just is meant to look like one, so things think it's poisonous, but it really isn't. So I can't find him. Wait. Is that one? Yeah. Right behind the Anthony's poison dart frog. That's an imposter poison dart frog. Time to leave the rainforest. I love that part of this aquarium. But now, it's time to get scary. Because we're going to Shark Alley. So that's the way the aquarium basically works. You take escalators and moving walkways to the top. You see a rainforest. Then you walk down these ramps and look at cool sharks. We still have another building where there's dolphins, but the main aquarium section. Just to get a sense of your surroundings, that's where we were going up and looking at the other tanks. This curved wall on the outside was the blue neon waves. So the top floor of this is gonna be the Atlantic Coral Reefs. And once you leave the top, it's ramps that go down back to the first floor in Shark Alley. From the surface, we saw that big fish swimming. But when you get low, you can see how many fish are actually under this water. Have you been waiting for me to take your video? Or are you waiting for your buddy to catch up? Woo. You just boogie. Big guy. But we didn't see these ones. Look how many beautiful colored fish there are in this tank. More eel hanging out on the bottom. Showing us his pretty smile. We might see a nurse shark. Or a sandbar shark. Or my favorite, a smooth hammerhead shark. We have found some sharks. We have our sore fish. We have a big nurse shark hanging out on the bottom. Fascinates me watching the gills suck in and out, pushing out the water. And Shark Alley lets us out at Black Tip Reef. Now this tank is actually the tank that we saw from the first floor that fills the center of the aquarium. We're actually under it now. And there are those black tips. We're leaving the main part of the aquarium, crossing this covered bridgeway to Dolphin Discovery. Continue ahead to see the bottlenose dolphins. We actually have a different view of the harbor now. Dolphins Discovery. Dolphins seem to be with the trainers on the other side, but it is a big dolphin area. We've never been here before. There aren't dolphin shows, it's just a viewing area. If you want to hang out, enjoy the dolphins, you can. 
like we said before, the dolphins at the moment were here are with their trainer. But there are big under underwater viewing windows if they were on this size for us to see them. But the point of these bottlenose dolphins aren't entertain us. They are trying to rehabilitate them to release them back. So whatever they're doing is for that purpose right now. They also have like weird stuff like bird sounds in the building. Oh, one's coming in. Huh? No, I was thinking about it. What I was saying was they actually had bird noises up there because when they release the dolphins back to the wild, there's going to be different sounds and sights and stuff that they're trying to teach the dolphins so they're not confused when they get back to the wild. We got a dolphin. And these are bottlenose dolphins. You just came through a door. That door's closed, buddy. That's all. That's all you get, folks. You're talking about what I was saying about they're going to be released, but first they go to reimagining the future for our pod. Here's a dolphin sanctuary. The sanctuary would be a dolphin's first facility, giving the pod increased choice and control. It's so the next step. It's getting the dolphins back out. This would be a seaside sanctuary. And you might be looking at this photo going, that's a small dolphin close. Well, that's not it. If you actually look, it's this whole cove. Really giving dolphins a lot more room, but also that they could be watched and monitored. This guy right here has been playing It's a long blue rod with all these little blue fan flags. And the dolphin's just spinning around, grabbing it, letting it go, spinning around. Let's see, are you gonna grab it again, dolphin? Got it! Here are all the dolphins, the trainer's coming, saying hi. And our last exhibit, Jelly's Invasion, hidden behind the cafe. They're invading joy. I always feel jellyfish are like aliens. We have some Pacific sea nettles. I know, these are cool. And you're only watching home, not here. Hopefully one day you get to see them. But for now, please don't be jelly. Lagoon jellies. Look at the color of these guys. Looks like floating upside down. That's just the way they uh, float through life. No brain to control their, their nerves. No eyes, no head. Just the stomachs and reproductive organs gliding through life. Blue blubber jelly. So beautiful. It almost looks like a little mushroom. I love when they bump into each other and you see like, like they sort of almost bounce off each other. And there are some Japanese sea nettles. Almost look like the Pacific sea nettles. Coloring's a little different on the top. And it's funny, me and Joy go to a lot of aquariums. I feel we learn a lot of facts, but I learned a different fact I never learned today about jellyfish. They start off small and they grow big, but then they get smaller when they get older in life, leading to dying. Upside down jellies. Hopefully when I'm walking on the shore one day, I don't step in this pile. That would not be a fun one. We have Atlantic Bay Nettles. I actually got one of these guys. It's a little dark in here. Tattooed right on my hand. Hey buddy, look, it's your cousin. See this one? It looks almost like when you're making a poached egg and you crack an egg, put it in the boiling water, 
with the yellow center, these are actually known as egg yolk jellies. Our final tank in this aquarium, some more moon jellies. I can't pet these ones. These are way tinier than the ones I was petting before. It's amazing. You could swim all day with these guys, they were saying. The little barbs are too weak to penetrate humans. Nothing to worry about. Tons of options of your crushed pennies. Only one thing left to do. Exit through the gift shop. This is cool. The gift shop's trying to help our planet too. Transitional cotton apparel. 100% recycled plushes. Local products made in Baltimore. 100% recycled plastic toys, reusable water bottles, eco-friendly store designs, celebrating diversity, reusable shopping bags, products that give back. That's cool. These recycled flip-flop crabs are awesome. It's cool what they said, green toys. 100% recycled plastic make these toys now. Showing how the toys are made. We mold the plastic into our safe toys. I love this. this, there's no wall. Like, yep, I can just whoop. And it was funny, as I said that, I almost slipped on this tile right here. That wouldn't have been funny. So we came, we saw all the animals. Mm -hmm. Lots of fishing swimming around. Yes. Something seemed fishy in there to me. It's because it was a lot of fish. We were at an aquarium. It happens, the National Aquarium, in fact. I love this spot. Uh, we've been coming here for years. Not that often, because it is Baltimore, it's not that close to us. But since I've been a child, it has been one of my favorite aquariums I've ever went to. Me and Joy have been checking out other cool aquariums. Yeah. Just getting, there's some on, on that list of top aquariums. But this one holds a special spot in my heart. Well, especially also the, they did the dolphin discovery area. Yeah, that whole new section it's built so cool. is amazing. Because there's a lot of modern new things. But also just the way you go up the escalators and walkways and the tanks are on the side and come down through Shark Alley. Yeah. It's been like that my whole life and it means so much that you can come back and relive your own childhood looking at a cool aquarium, showing how they're trying to help the environment. I love it. I would recommend the National Aquarium to anyone if you're around Baltimore. Yes. I think we can call it, Joy. I think so. National Aquarium. Been there, done that. that. Remember folks, safe travels. Good eat. And live life. The ultimate showdown. Pirate ship versus dragon boat. Who would win?